happy Friday <clears throat> to everybody. I can't complain because it's been a short week for me, honey, because uh, y'all know I was off Monday and Tuesday. So I just had a short work week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I am happy it is Friday. I'm coming to you guys a little early because I got some things I got to do tonight, honey. I'm hanging out tonight. So I said, well, let me come down and talk to my people. I got about an hour, an hour and a half. I really don't have an hour and a half. I might be a few minutes late. But we're going to talk about some things before I get on out of here. Uh, depending on traffic, it might take me an hour and a half. I, I mean, it might take me an hour to get where I'm going. Um, but I'm going out to dinner with my cousins. Um, y'all know my cousin that lives in Rome. She is in the country. She leaves on Monday. So we're going out to dinner tonight. Um, me and my, you know, the three of us. So we're going to be hanging out. All right, you guys. So let's get into some things of the things of things that we are going to talk about today. Hey, 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 can y'all see me and hear me? Of course, the dang on camera is tripping. Hey, you guys. Um, all right, you guys. Let me say hi to the people before we get into what we're going to get into today. What's up, Cub Star? Hey, Ebs. Hey, China Rainbow. The Informed. Candy said, eh, eh. Oh, we're going to get there. Gossip in the Garden. Miss Woodards. How you doing? Lovely, true, red, majestic. Shakira. 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 What up, Rye? Hey, B. Shalom. Star Bell. What's up, St. James? St. J- Listen, St. James has been give- keeping you guys updated. If you guys are, you know, is it was it a convocation going on for the Kojic folk? Y'all make sure y'all y'all keep up with the Kojic things going on over there to the St. James. And congratulations, you just hit another milestone. What you hit? 13 five subscribers. You about to pass me, boo? You about to pass me? Wave. Just make sure you wave and honk the horn as you drive by. Congratulations. Hey, Keisha, Cindy, Angela, happy Friday. It was doing, it was going along all week. I have a daycare with the school age here because of spring break. Oh, child, yes, yeah, a long week for you. Hey, Candy, what's up, Just Simply? If I didn't speak, charge it to my head and not my heart. I did not feel the earthquake. I've been getting texts all day. Maybe it was in New York, New Jersey. Now, I did start seeing people talking about something. Did y'all feel the earthquake down here? Or like people in D.C., child, I didn't see nothing about no earthquake here. Um, but I did have to do a check with my folk up into the, um, New Jersey, New York area. And if you are in the New, Jer- New York, New Jersey area, y'all check in and let me know y'all. Okay. Tracy, you unsubscribe. See, that's what I'm, listen, that's what I keep telling y'all. I lost like five subscribers today. You must've been five, one of them, Tracy. I keep telling y'all, I keep telling y'all, you two be playing crackhead games. Okay. So y'all just make sure that y'all stay, um, just, just check your favorites, especially if you stop seeing your favorites pop up, just go check to see if you still subscribe, please. And thank you. I told y'all YouTube unsubscribe Abby from my channel. Abby is a, a managing moderator on my channel. She ain't just a regular moderator. She is a managing moderator and they unsubscribed her. And y'all know how Tracy, um, works and she's here every time I go live. Like, I don't understand what in the algorithm told YouTube that I would, that Tracy didn't want to be here no more. <laughs> well, make sure you subscribe back and y'all make sure y'all check. Um, you're in Philly and you felt it. Oh shoot. I gotta go check on my Philly people. Y'all okay up there? Not really be unsubscribing on the back end. Powerful. <laughs> right. Right. And powerful was blocked. I don't know how powerful got blocked, but we got her to um, unblock. We got everything together. So, all right, you guys, let's get into some things of the things. Like I said, we got a few things to cover today. And let's get into the things of the things, honey. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm just sharing that we are live. So, congratulations to Bronny James Jr. Bronny James has declared the draft for the draft. Um, I know that LeBron said one of um, one of the things he wanted to do was to be able to play in the NBA with his son. Um, don't know who's going to draft Le- um, his son. Don't know where he's going to end up. But it'll be very interesting to see if LeBron ends up on the same team as his son. He said that's what he wanted. Um, that was one of the things he wanted to be able to do. 
Um, he They asked him a few weeks ago how much more gas he had in the tank, like how much longer was he going to play, and he was like, not much. You know, not much longer. I ain't got a whole lot more gas in this tank. So I could see him maybe, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to use the word manipulate, but uh, but maybe manipulate is the word. Manipulate the system so he can end up in the same on the same team as his son for one one or two years, and you know, um, and then go on and retire. So, so congratulations to him. Okay, congratulations to him. Uh, they keep messing with your membership. Yeah, you two be playing games, y'all. I'm sorry, Keisha. I'm so sorry about that. So that's that. Um, we know Angel Reese declared for the WNBA draft. We already talked about that. Okay. Y'all, not the baby with the heart issue going to the NBA. Let that baby do a year, then go back to school. You know, listen. One thing I'm going to say is, this is my opinion, and I don't know this to be a fact. I'm certainly no medical doctor, right? But here's what I believe to be true, because we've we've been dealing with a lot of these young athletes dealing with these heart problems. And I believe and I don't want to sound like no conspiracy theorist, but I believe that maybe some of these supplements that these kids are, are, are using some of this new these newfound um, technology or medicines or things that they have these these kids using to, you know, build up the muscles and, and, you know, stuff they putting in their smoothies or whatever. I honestly believe that there is something that these kids are doing that is affecting their heart that we may not be seeing right now, or they do see, but the kids are willing to take the chance thinking it's going to get them where they want to be physically. I believe that because we see a lot of, I mean, we see a lot of um, athletes, but we definitely have been seeing these high caliber athletes. We saw it happen with Shaquille O'Neal's son. The, ex, the exact same thing happened with LeBron James' son. Um, we've seen this happen. So I honestly feel like there is something that we're going to find out in a couple of years that all of these kids are taking. Um I, I disagree. I don't think it's which vax. I don't. I don't think it's the vaccines. But again, I'm no doctor. I am no doctor, so I don't. I, I don't think it's the vaccine. Um, and when you say vaccine, which vaccine are you talking about? There's a lot of different vaccines. So, but that's just me. I, again, I ain't go to nobody's medical school, child, so I don't know. But I do believe that to be the case because again, we just see way too many of these kids with these heart problems, and then they're able to come back. You know. LeBron James' son played, you know, so I don't know. Yeah, the energy jinx or the powders. Yeah, I believe it's something they're doing on that end. I think it's something they're doing with the the fitness side of it, the building up of the muscles. I believe that. Now, that's just, again, and what I will also say is LeBron James can afford, I'm sure that his son has gone to the top cardiologist in the country, in the world, and, um, but the other thing is this. We talked about this the other day. You can find a doctor to say what you want the doctor to say. If you go to enough doctors and you got enough money, I mean, look at Michael Jackson. You can find the right doctor to say the right slash wrong thing. So um, I wish him well. Congratulations. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't wish... I don't wish no ill will on none of these kids. Um, and congratulations. And again, I just hope that they're heeding whatever the doctors are saying. I hope they're heeding, heeding that. Okay. All right. We about to have a moment. And some of y'all not getting ready to like what I'm about to say. And I'm okay with that. I love y'all anyway. They say they turned Sexy Red down from coming into the school. Because she smelled like weed.
I got a couple of problems. A couple of questions. My first problem slash question. Who in the invited Sexy Red to the school? Now, I know we had this conversation last year. I think Sexy Red went down to the school last year. And I said the same thing last year. Hoppo, who is this woman and why is she here? Why did they, what is she doing down to the school? Now, listen, I am not one of those people that feels like just because your music is inappropriate for school that you are inappropriate for school, okay? I'm not one of those people. I'm not one of those people. But here is what I am going to say. Why was she coming? Was it career day? Was it like the senior assembly So before we even get to the fact that she wasn't allowed to come on campus, can we address why she was even invited in the first place? Sir, ma'am, whomever, not the principal, right, the principal from Abbott Elementary, right? (laughs) And I keep telling y'all, I told y'all, I don't have the bandwidth right now, meaning I don't have the time right now, but I I told y'all that I want to do a series over on the Teacher Project 2.0. I want to do a series where we go episode by episode of Abbott Elementary and talk about what they got right. Because when I tell you, for those of you that love Abbott Elementary, when I tell you, when I tell you that 80% of what you see on Abbott Elementary, I've either seen or experienced in my life as an educator, including the principal. Now, she might be a little exaggerated in certain areas, but let's be clear. I have seen and or worked for principals that they got out the Cracker Jack box. I have worked for people that got their job because they knew the wrong information about the right people. But anyway, that's another conversation on another day, on another show. So first of all, I don't know who invited her. I don't know who cleared her to come and I don't know what her reason was for being there. However, comma, if you did get said phone call that said, come on down to the school, we want you to talk to our churn. I am sick of people not understanding what is appropriate, when it's appropriate, and how it's appropriate. Remember when Cardi went down to the school of, uh, what, the year before last? When, when she, Now, we know why she went. It was a publicity stunt because her ass was in trouble. Um, no, I didn't, um, little baby, but I heard about it, vice principals. You know, when her ass was in trouble. Uh, you know, she was in trial. She went down to the school and she gave money back to her old elementary school and she made some donations and stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. It, I, in my When I say it was a publicity stunt, it, in my mind, it was a follow op. Now, again, I have worked in schools. Uh, you know, I've been in education all my life. Let's be clear. A whole lot of people come down to the school and throw little trinkets at the kids for photo ops. So I ain't saying it like, like Cardi is an anomaly. Okay, they all do it. Well, not all, but a lot of them do it. When the cameras go away, so do they. And we'll never see or hear from them again, okay? But with that being said, Cardi was appropriately dressed. Now, we know that Cardi has got body, yada, yada. She paid a lot of good money for that body, okay? She, But she had on long pants that covered her booty. I mean, as much as it can be covered, we know it got that old BBL thing working. She was in appropriate heels. She had on a nice blouse. She had her hair back in a ponytail. You understand what I'm saying? She showed up at the school like somebody mama. She did not show up to the school like Cardi B. I'm about to go on stage and I got my booty hanging out and my belly exposed and my titties about to pop out my shirt and I'm going to come running down the aisle and let you see, you know, what I paid good money for. She showed up like somebody mama. Did y'all see how Cardi, uh, a sexy red was dressed? So, You showed up looking like you was about to go on stage. She had on a shirt that was cut up and you could see, you know, all of this. Of course, it was a hole so you could see her her midriff and booty shorts. 
So even if your reason for coming to the school was a legit, you know, like you were coming to give a speech, whatever you were doing, ma'am, who, why, why would you think that was an appropriate way to show up? And I don't want nobody talking about, oh, and she's young. Oh, but that's just what she, I don't give a, that's part of the problem in the world we live in today is that people don't, don't feel like they got to dress appropriate for certain situations. It's a lack of respect for everything around here. I don't care. Our parents, grandparents, great, great grandparents in some cases, I mean, most of us, I can't speak for everybody in this chat. I don't know y'all like that. But most of us didn't come from money. But our parents made sure that we dressed appropriate at the right time and at the right place for the right things. And if the money wasn't there, we were clean and it was iron and it was and it was appropriate. So you showed up down to the school smelling like weed. They said they didn't let you on campus because you smelled like weed. You could not smoke the blunt for the first for, for the 30 minutes before you went. You could have smoked the blunt before you left the house, got in the car with the windows rolled down, and you would have been all right. That means that literally you pulled up to the school looking like Red Man and Met the Man with the car just full of damn smoke. And let's be clear, I have seen students, I have seen my students pull up to the school like that. Their parents drop them off like that. Their parents drop them off, they get out the car, and I'm like, damn! That's how they get out the car. So let's be clear. But why would you think it was just, I, I, I just, the men, and they had a the nerve to act like the school was wrong. So what does she do? She starts a concert outside. Y'all, we going to hell in a handbasket. Our society is just going to hell in a handbasket. And like I said, my first question is, who the hell invited her? What? Why? You, what you here for? Unless your child is enrolled, I don't, I don't understand why you're here. Unless you have a child at this school and you are here to pick up, drop off, or a PTA meeting, I'm not, I'm not sure why you're here. If I was that principal's superintendent, I promise you they'd have been in my office first thing this morning. Because we got questions. <sighs> okay, I'm done. I'm done with that. I'm done with it. I'm moving on. I said my piece. I'm moving on. <sighs> Another couple that I'm about sick of. Now, somebody the other day when I was talking about this couple, somebody put in my comments the other day, they said, Simon, I mean, they said, Croy and and uh, uh, Croy and Kim. And I was like, no, that ain't quite as bad as Croy and Kim, but they about to be. They about as bad as Croy and Kim. That damn Simon and Portia, I'm sick of them. I'm sick of them. And y'all getting all excited because Fallon came down here talking about some she got tea to spill. She ain't talking about Simon. If Fallon ain't about to come down here and tell us nothing about Simon, she ain't already said. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. She probably got an um, a NDA in her final divorce decree. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know. But I don't believe that Fallon is coming down here and telling us nothing we don't already know. And that's my opinion. That is my opinion. But let me give y'all the, the update. Portia Williams' ex, Simon, denies fleeing to Dubai, demands sanctions over the Real Housewives of Atlanta over inflammatory claim in divorce. <sighs> Portia Williams, 
A strange husband, Simon Gobadia, fired back against the Real Housewives of Atlanta star claim he fled the country amid their divorce battle. According to court documents obtained by Radar Online, Gobadia scoffed at Williams' allegations in court. As part of her motion for excessive, uh, excuse, excuse me, exclusive access to their marital home, Portia's lawyer wrote, White further shows that husband appears to have fled the country to Dubai and it's unknown when or whether he intends to return. Now, I'm agree with Simon on that one. Y'all knew his ass was coming back. Stop playing. Y'all knew Simon was coming back. Now, but okay. His lawyer said wife shows the news reports of husband's alleged immigration fraud and what appeared to be an imminent threat of deportation were shocking and affected wife's mental and emotional well-being. None of this information was ever disclosed by the husband to the wife, despite wife having previously inquired about husband's immigration. I feel like I'm, I feel like I've read this already. All right. So, child. All right. So Simon said, y'all knew my ass was coming back. I agree. Y'all knew Simon was coming back. So now this is the latest update. Portia Williams X denies removing her from marital mansion, argues that the Real Housewives of Atlanta star has $1.8 million, has a $1.8 million home she can live in. Well, which one is it? Which one is it? Is it you didn't remove her or is it she got a house she can go live in? Which one is it, Simon? Let me read this article. Simon is fighting her request for exclusive access to their marital mansion after she accused him of changing the locks when she filed for divorce in documents obtained by Radar Online. Simon said he, he denied removing his ex from the home, arguing that he purchased it using his own money before their marriage while adding the Real Housewives of Atlanta star has a separate home nearby she can live in. Simon said he's been the sole payer of the purchase and expenses in the mansion since buying it on November the 8th, over a year before they said I do. While he admitted that she moved into the property before they wed, Simon charged this is the only home he has in the United States. Simon informed the court that he remained in the marital house with his children during the divorce, adding that Portia has since moved back to the marital residence since filming for an emergency, filing for an emergency hearing, excuse me. In the documents filed Wednesday in Fulton County, he argued that Portia has the option to live comfortably in her $1.8 million home located in, Gwin located in Gwinnett County, uh, where she has been the sole owner since 2016. Despite Portia's claim, Simon further argued she and her daughter were never displaced. Simon claimed that Portia unexpectedly abandoned their home after she filed for divorce, accusing her of doing so without any prior discussion with husband and without any regard to care for the house or husband's children. He charged that as a result of wife's abandonment, arrangements had to be made for the care of husband's children as husband had traveled for work. The businessman also argued that the judge has yet to rule that their prenup is valid. Thus, she should... Oh, Lord. Sorry, y'all. My thing just jumped. Sorry. See, my screen just went blank. I don't know what's going on here. Hold on. Let me find out where I left off. Sorry about that. Gwinnett County without his husband. The businessman also argued that the judge has yet to rule on their pre that their prenup is valid. Thus, he should be able to stay in the home he purchased. <laughs> what's the purpose of a prenup if everybody just going to fight the damn prenup? Y'all was just, listen, y'all ain't been married 18, but 18 months. That is not long enough for y'all to be acting like y'all got amnesia over this damn prenup. If the prenup say that she can stay in the home until it is sold or the delusion of the, or the, 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 the dissolvement of the marriage and that you have to leave and that your stuff has to be out within, that you have to leave within 90 days of filing for divorce and the stuff has to be out within three months of filing for divorce. I'm not understanding what you mean that a judge has to rule that the prenup is valid. What the hell is the purpose of having the prenup if now you can't enforce the damn prenup? 
I am confusion. Why do we have a prenup if we can't enforce the damn prenup? Sick of y'all. I'm, I'm sick of y'all. Shout out to the 230 people that are in the room. If you have not already hit the like button, can you please take the moment right now and do so? It will be much appreciated. And if you are new here, y'all going to hit that subscribe button. It ain't nothing but a thing. It is free. What, y'all? 99. Uh, donations are not required, but they are what, y'all? Appreciated and accepted. Okay? So let's just take a pause for the calls right now so y'all can go and hit that like button and do all the things and the things and the things. Okay? I'm tired of Kim and her husband, Portia and Simon, Bambi and Scrappy, Jeezy and Jenny, Amon and Tiana, Ray J and Princess. Well, listen, Sharice, a couple of them names on there, you know I don't even speak on. I don't speak on Ray J and Princess. I'm sick of y'all. Can y'all hear me? I'm sorry. I, I must have knocked. So can y'all hear me? Let me know if y'all can hear me. I don't want to keep talking if y'all can't hear me. Let me see. Testing, testing. I think y'all can hear me. Hold on. Let me see if y'all can hear me. Okay, you can now. Okay, cool. Thank you. So I I I'm you see, I don't talk about Ray J and Princess, and I, I don't talk about Scrappy and Bambi. I just don't. I can't. I ain't got the energy for either one of them. Okay. Um Jenny and Jeezy, I'm done with them until, you know, I'm, I'm done with the two of them, okay? Um, Tiana and Amon, uh, I don't understand. Tiana filed that thing under uh, under initials so wouldn't nobody know what was going on so she could keep her business her business. He the one that wanted it public, and now you mad that it's all out there public, okay? We about to get to that real as it gets. Give me a minute, baby. She is on the agenda, okay? We about to get there. In the but I'm just sick of it. And I hate, you know, I hate, you know, we, we we hate when we see married couples that come to an end. And I really hate to see it when it gets nasty. I really, really do. I really hate to see, you know, end of marriages get nasty. But let me tell y'all something. That I thought that was part of the reason for a prenup. To avoid all this bullshit. I really thought that was part of what, why we do prenups. To avoid this bullshit. All right, y'all. Well, since we at Bravo, let's stay at Bravo for a minute. We about to, we got a couple of things on the docket when it comes to Bravo. Let's get on over here, honey. Let me go on over here to page six. Page six been giving us a little bit of information. So let's get on over here um, to page six. Hold on, y'all. These pop-ups be killing me. So we know that Carolyn Manzo is in the process of suing Bravo um, and True Entertainment over claims that she was um, sexually assaulted, harassed, what have you, while they were filming um, Ultimate Girls Trip by Brandy Glanville. We read the lawsuit, you guys. You guys can go back and look it up. We've read, we've read it. Well, now um, it looks like Bravo has, um, I guess they have filed their response and one of the executive producers has stated some things. So let's read through this article really quickly, okay? An executive producer of the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip claims in new court documents that Carolyn Manzo felt disrespected by Brandy but wasn't sexually violated by her. As Page Six previously reported, the Real Housewives of New Jersey alum earlier this year claiming the Real House um, sued, excuse me, Bravo and Peacock earlier this year claiming the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills alum harassed her kissed her without consent at the behest of production while they filmed in Morocco. Manzo also claimed in court documents that Glanville then proceeded to mount her on the couch, holding her down with her body and forcibly squeezed her cheeks together and thrust her tongue in Manzo's mouth. 
In new court documents filed in response, Lisa Shannon claims that Manzo told production at the time that Glanville's alleged actions that evening had triggered memories of her past childhood trauma, but didn't mention an assault. Our primary concern at that point was making sure that Manzo felt safe. She told us that she felt safe, but she wanted to, she told us that she felt safe, that she wanted to continue to film and that she did not want Glanville to be sent home. Shannon then claims that Manzo was not left alone with Glanville that evening. And the following morning, Manzo told Shannon and other production members that she still felt safe and wanted to continue fil filming the reality series. In a conversation with Shannon, which has been reenacted in the documents, Manzo purportedly told her, listen, I feel self safe, okay? I feel your support. This is for me. I'm dealing with something that has been buried deep in my soul for 50 years. The documents also note that following Glanville's incident with Manzo, production ceased including Glanville and group activities. However, other cast members, including Phaedra Parks, allegedly perceived the events differently. I'm going I'm, to I'm come back to that, but let me finish reading the article. All of us thought we were having fun, Parks told Manzo. No one knew about whatever has happened to you in the past. Shannon also claims Manzo flew home, to, flew home from Morocco because the rest of the cast informed Manzo in a group text that they were going to visit. Why they had to put that? They shady. Oh, why they why they put this in the article? They said in a group text they were going to visit the OnlyFans star. Y'all ain't had to call Brandy Glanville the OnlyFans star. That was shady. At her hotel, which was the only time Manzo allegedly asked not to be filmed. At that time, she asked a production crew not to film her, and we honored that request, Shannon writes in the documents. Other than that incident, Manzo never asked to be filmed or not to be filmed or expressed to me or to my knowledge, anyone else from production, that she was uncomfortable being filmed. She continues noting that Manzo willingly allowed production to film her discussing her decision to depart the trip. Shannon's response also notes that the network paid Manzo in full despite leaving early. Manzo's attorney didn't immediately return um, page six's request for comment. Okay, so can I say something? Can I say something? I feel like I feel like they told on themselves in their own answer. So let me let me let me explain what I mean by that. You said that there was an incident. You admit that something happened, although you claim y'all didn't film it. Cool. All right. Great. Then you said that Carol, that Manzo said she felt safe and that something happened that triggered her childhood memories that she was trying to work through. But then in the next paragraph, you talk about we didn't film any more scenes with Glanville, any group, any more group scenes with Brandy. And she was at a hotel away from the rest of the cast. If, if you, if you say that Carolyn Manzo felt disrespected, but nothing, but she wasn't, you don't, to your knowledge, she was not sexually violated. Why did y'all go to that extreme? Cause let's be clear. These housewives disrespect each other on a regular damn basis. That is the whole premise of the show. They disrespect each other. They argue about it. They make up. They disrespect each other. They argue about it. They make up. That's the damn formula. And Carolyn Manzo is a is a is a vet at this. She's been doing reality TV for twenty years. So please, somebody explain to me how this was just a regular old. Oh, she felt disrespected. If y'all went to the extreme of not letting Brandy film any more group scenes and making Brandy leave the house. Sway. 
And then don't make it seem like you did her a favor. Well, we paid her for her full fee, even though she left early. First of all, she left one day early. So don't play with me. She left one damn day early. Number two, you probably thought if we pay her, she'll just go away and this shit will be over with. She was mad. She said some stuff went down. So you're claiming that she left early because she got mad that the ladies went to go film with Brandy. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sorry, y'all. The chat's not moving. So if y'all are talking, I don't see it. The last comment I see is not even ex Bravo light. So I don't know if y'all, I mean, maybe y'all not talking, but if y'all are speaking, I'm not ignoring y'all. I'm just letting y'all know the chat. Okay, now it's moving. All right. What's up, Inspire? Hey, boo. So yeah, y'all, I'm really, I am confusion. I mean, am I tripping? Put it in the chat. Let me see if y'all talking because it ain't moving, but maybe y'all just not talking. Um, what y'all think? Do y'all think, I mean, am I tripping? Am I reading too much into it? What y'all think? Let me go to the chat because I sure can't see nothing. If y'all talking, I don't see it. Maybe y'all just not talking. Okay, now it's moving a little bit. Hold on, let me see. Maybe y'all just not talking. Okay. Okay, now it's moving a little bit. Okay. Anyway, so I, I, I just felt like I'm reading this and I'm like, so you admit that y'all removed her from the house. You admit that she wasn't allowed to film any more group scenes. You acknowledge that something went down that triggered her childhood memories. She told you that. You acknowledge that she felt disrespected. I don't know, y'all. I feel like I feel like they're admitting that something went down. That's my two cents. All right. Well, let's get into this. Bravo got another lawsuit on their hands, honey. Let's get into it. And then we're going to get into this Candy and Aoki situation, honey. Let's go back over to the radar online. Ex Vanderpump Rules star Faith Stowers, Stowers accuses Bravo producers of pressuring her to get intimate with Lala Kent after admitting crush. Faith Stowers had a secret crush on Lala Kent during season four of Vanderpump Rules. The ex reality star's lawsuit against Bravo and NBC Universal, in which she admitted to confiding in a producer that she developed feelings for Kent, claiming they pressured the girls to get intimate and touch one another on camera during a cash trip. We broke the story. Stowers sued Bravo and NBC Universal over alleged discrimination and retaliation on Friday. She also claimed that she suffered sexual harassment and physical violence as the only Black cast member. In the lawsuit, Stowers, de Stowers described having a crush on Kent and on the trip where she was allegedly encouraged to get sexual with her. Stowers' experience of Vanderpump rules during season four included sexual harassment and physical violence, the legal documents read. When Stowers confided in a producer that she had developed feelings for Kent, production seemed gleeful to make, a di to make the dynamic as awkward and uncomfortable as possible. For the cash trip to Hawaii, production arranged for Kent and Stowers to stay in a room with a single bed. Moreover, production pressured Kent and Stowers to get intimate and touch each other on camera. Stowers said the experience was greatly distressing, later detailing how Kent allegedly threatened her with a knife during a separate incident. According to the former Vanderpump Rules star, she was violently assaulted by Kent when Lala became severely agitated, losing all self-control during an alleged argument at Sir. 
With the cameras rolling, Kent grabbed a knife from a nearby counter and began brandishing it at Stowers, holding it to her neck and threatening to cut a bee. Stowers claimed in the suit. Radar Online told you Stowers felt like she was in actual danger, alleging she feared that Kent would stab her or disfigure her face. Stowers said that she was deeply shaken over the alleged incident and reported it to NBC and Evolution, who she claimed began to cover up almost immediately when she expressed her intention to involve law enforcement. She alleged that she received a call from an executive producer to discourage her from involving the police or escalating the situation by speaking to the media. Stowers claimed the EP downplayed the alleged event significance and strongly implied that speaking out would come with severe career ramifications. She also alleged that she was warned that she would be terminated if she did not find a way to get along with Kent. They reached out to Kent's lawyers for a comment, yada, yada, yada. Stowers is suing... This thing keeps jumping, y'all, sorry. Stowers is suing for several things, including alleged discrimination, a hostile work environment, wrongful termination, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and more. She's just demanding unspecified damages. Stowers powerhouse lawyer Mark Gar Garagos. Oh, we've seen him before. Tracy, Abby, if somebody's here, can y'all Google Mark Garagos? Because we've seen that attorney's name before. Find out who else he done sued. Because I feel like we done seen him before. And Brian Friedman tell Radar Online that NBC, NBC and Evolution clearly believe that workplace safety rules, employment laws, and basic decency do not apply to those in reality TV. Vicious assaults, racist harassment, and impug impuny, excuse me, the service of veterans are apparently acceptable to NBC and Evolution for the sake of ratings. Faith did not know what kind of cesspool she had found herself in and reported this unlawful behavior to her superiors. In response, she was demoted to volunteer and stripped of her already meager compensation. He represented Chris Brown and Michael Jackson. He did the, oh, he did the, I knew I knew that name. Okay, he did the Michael Jackson case. Um, now, you guys know that normally we will pull and read the whole lawsuit. Uh, we may do that at a later time, but I just wanted to give you guys the, um, that, that lawsuit was filed today. Now, I never watched um, Vanderpump Rules, but I do remember the situation with this young lady. Um, and wasn't it another situation where some racist comments were made and and that's why two of the girls got fired because they made some racist comments about her or something like that. Am I am I getting that right? Anybody that watched Vanderpump Rules, am I am I accurate? He represented Chris Brown doing a Rihanna trial. Okay, thank you, Lexi. Thank you, um, Nico Rich and everybody else. I, okay, thank you, baby. Thank you. All right. He also represented Jesse Smollett. Oh, well, that might be where I know. Y'all know, know that might be where I know it from. So with that being said, it was Kristen and Stassi trying to get that girl arrested, I think. Okay. I knew it was something else with this young lady. Okay. 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 Right? We ain't even in April yet. We ain't even hit the six-month mark. And 2024 is not playing with y'all hoes. Well, y'all ain't telling me I got the little alfalfa thing working right here. Yeah, 2024 is not playing with y'all. With that being said, he he represented Diddy too. Oh, 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 oh. All right, we got two more stories to get to before I head out for my Friday evening shenanigans. Okay. It's 300. Well, no, it's not 300. I'm sorry. It's 260 of y'all in here. I hope we have about 200 likes. Do we have 200 likes? If y'all could please get me the 200 likes. Y'all know how this goes. The more likes I have, the more YouTube pushes my videos. Okay? If y'all could do that, I would what? Appreciate it. Now, right before I went live, and when I say right before I went live, I mean literally right before. Like, I was still setting this live up, and something hit my desk. 
I was on the phone talking to a friend of mine and she told me about it. And at the same time, down to L. Teddy members only group chat, it hit at the same time. Now I'm gonna put this picture up here and then I'm gonna read y'all this article. Why the picture ain't showing? Come on, picture. Why is my internet moving so slow? Can y'all see the picture? Hold on. Because I don't see the picture. But y'all might be able to see it. Hold on. Let me see what's going on. Hold on. Okay, I don't know why the picture ain't showing, but hold on. Let me click it again. Maybe. Okay, there it is. It... No. Come on, show the dang on picture. Y'all, stream y'all is tripping. All right. I, I it's more it's more than one way to skin this cat. I show y'all the picture. Give me a second. Let me um read y'all this article and then I'll show y'all the picture. Cause I it, it, why is it not popping up on the screen? Baby, it's more than one way to skin this cat. Hold on. I don't know what's going on with this thing. But baby, it's more than one way to skin this cat. <laughs> I promise you. Okay, here we go. We're gonna do it this way. Since you don't want to, you want to play with me. It, it's showing that it's saying on my end, it's saying that the picture showing, but I don't see it on the screen. All right, but we got more. Listen, we got more than one way to skin this cat. We're just gonna share the screen, and I'm gonna show. I'm just right, we're gonna share the screen. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay. Now y'all should be able to see it. There we go. Okay, y'all can see it now. Okay, now y'all can see it. Now let me read y'all this article for some of y'all that don't know what y'all looking at. Let me read y'all this article, okay? Aoki Lee Simmons, who is 22, kisses Serafina co-founder Vittorio Asaf who is 65, on a romantic trip to St. Bart's. Aoki Lee Simmons, 21, was spotted kissing restaurateur during a romantic vacation to St. Bart's on Tuesday. In photos obtained by Page Six, the youngest daughter of Kamora Lee Simmons and Russell Simmons packed on the PDA with the much older man, I'm going to just say rich man because they just keep saying restaurateur, rich man, at one point, Aoki posed as Asaf took pictures with her on his phone. They also took a dip in the clear blue water and shared a steamy kiss while on the white sand. The model wore an olive green bikini with a tribal print on the front. Why are we? Asaf went shirtless, only sporting a pair of light blue, white <sighs> swim trunks, child. Page six reached out to reps for both Aoki and Asaf for comment, but they did not immediately hear back. On Friday, Aoki posted some snaps from her trip to the Caribbean island on Instagram, but she notably did not include her bow in any of them. On March the 27th, she shared a photo of herself on a beach wearing the same bikini. <sighs> The Milan-born businessman also posted pictures from his trip featuring one of his friends whom he said he had known for 25 years. So you've had this friend longer than this girl been alive. Ain't that some ish? Moving on. Asaf, Asaf made headlines in 2021 when his now ex-wife, former model Charlotte Bronstrom, left him after having an affair with her twin sister's ex-husband. <laughs> Woo! You had an affair with your twin sister's ex-husband. Charlotte and I are in a process of getting divorced. She wants to get remarried. He told Page Six at the time. She is getting married to Thierry Giller, the ex-husband of her sister. Mm. They were married for more than 20 years. They shared two kids. His last girlfriend allegedly was 24 years old. 
Meanwhile, Aoki is typically a private person. Last February, however, she shared a picture of her then boyfriend in honor of Valentine's Day. <sighs> Y'all. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I got a lot of different directions that I want to go with this commentary, but I'm just not sure in which direction to go. I'm with you, Nico Rich. Everybody in that picture is that in that article is nasty. So let me start at the beginning and work my way back. Somebody said who took those pictures? Well, it says paparazzi took them. So they were on the beach doing whatever it was they do. And the paparazzi got them pictures. Okay. St. Bart's is where the celebrities go to play. Okay. So I'm sure that there are certain people that like that work for the paparazzi that probably camp out in St. Bart's and see who gets off and on, um, who comes into the docks, who's shopping. Like when I went to St. Bart's, literally when you dock where we, I don't, and, it, and you know, I'm sure this isn't the only place you can dock a boat, but when we dock the boat, we docked that literally. When you get off the boat at St. Bart's, there's a Louis Vuitton, Chanel, you know, um, what else was over there? It was Chanel, Louis Dior. Like, all of these high-end stores are literally right there. Why would they stage it, Jax? I, I don't know why they would stage that. Like mother, like daughter. See now, Ray, I was going to say that because, you know, they can clean it up all they want to. Uh, Kamora was in high school when she started dating um, Russell. She was in high school when she, when she started dating Russell. Mm-hmm. Sure was. And he was in his 30s. And she was in high school. Now, they try to clean it up now and say, oh, she was 17 when they met, but they didn't start dating until after that. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. She was in high school and she wasn't 18. So, and he was in his 30s. And even if she was 18, he was still in his 30s. Did I like St. Bart's? It was expensive. I mean, I was only there for the day. I didn't stay on the island. I was just there for the day. I was at um, St. Martin and we took the boat over. When I was at St. Martin, we took the boat over to St. Bart's for the day and we took a boat over to um, Anguilla for the day. Now, I enjoy Anguilla more than I did St. Bart's because Anguilla was more like literally we just sat in the water. Now, Anguilla is expensive too. Like there was a little, you know, one of them little shacks at the beach and like the grilled cheese sandwich was like $20. So it's expensive too. Kamora said she was 14. Oh, see, I was giving her too many years. 14. Do I think this is the get back of her dad? Mm, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, people do weird things for weird reasons. I don't know. But I just think that, you know, just because she's 21, and I mean, the reality is she's 21, she makes her own money, so nobody can stop her, you know, technically. Like, her mama can't stop her, her daddy can't stop her. But I'm side-eyeing, like, girl, really? This man, and do you see him? He's not even cute. Like, if he was 65 and, like, you know, cute or something, then I might be like, oh, well, I mean, that's nasty, but... But the man is rich. I mean, I, I'm not trying to reduce it to that, but... I don't know what else to say, because if he was a 65 year old bus boy down to the restaurant where you eat in New York, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think I've been to Martinique um, probably on a cruise, I think. I think I went to Martinique on a cruise, I think. Um, is that a thing? Yeah, that's a thing. Listen, there are some cute 65 year olds. Yes, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want them. I don't 
don't want a 65 year old but there's some nice looking older guys that carry themselves well and you know got the nice little salt and pepper thing working and you know yeah again i don't want them they do nothing for me all right before we get out of here let's talk about now i told y'all and jonathan i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear it okay but this last story, I got to warn Jonathan because, you know, Jonathan be doing a lot sometimes. Now, let's see if this one pops up. This one don't pop up either. Oh, you know what, y'all? I know why it's not popping up. I know exactly why. It's a Listen, it's a really B problem, okay? It is a really B problem. I put it in the wrong place. <laughs> y'all, I uploaded the picture in, a wrong, in the wrong place, y'all. It's a really B thing, okay? I uploaded it as a background um, background instead of a layout. That's why y'all couldn't see the picture. Because I was tripping. I said, the picture is right here. All right. Earlier today, Candy posted this. You see, I kept it up there so you can see it came from Candy's official um, Instagram page. And then the rest of the ladies from Escape ended up resharing it. But let's read through what this says, okay? Candy said, let me explain some things to y'all in case y'all don't know. It says, hashtag, the more you know, a co-owner of a trademark is unable to maintain an infringement action against another co-owner of the same trademark. Each co-owner has the right to exercise its trademark rights, including granting licenses to third parties, i.e. Live Nation and Monami Entertainment. A valid license of one of the co-owners of a trademark cannot be liable to another co-owner for infringement. In other words, I don't know what the hell Tasha talking about, but we good and go get your tickets. Now, I told y'all that the other day when we read through that demand letter to the, um, that, that she wrote that, uh, Tasha's attorney allegedly wrote, didn't I tell y'all that? I told y'all, I said, whether you like Candy or not, whether you like Mona Scott Young or not, I don't believe that Candy or Mona Scott Young would move forward with a project on this level without making sure that all their T's were crossed and all their I's were dotted. Because it's not like they did not know that Tamika and Latasha shared the trademark. It's not that that was a secret. We knew about it. They talked about it either on the show or on one of those interviews when they were promoting the show. So we know about it. It'd be different if this was a secret and it, you know, all of a sudden Latasha popped up and was like, but you didn't know about this. But baby, they knew. And like I said the other day, I would have a question as to how many other concert dates and licensing and merch and any of these other things that these ladies have done in the last year without your permission. For every concert that they go to, they selling merch. What Jonathan say? I blame all of them because I think it's petty that they didn't let her know. And I think it's petty how Tasha is handling it. Let me say this. Let me say this. I I don't agree. And let me tell you why I don't agree. Based on what we know. Let me say this. Because there might be more. Hey, Pat. There may be more that we don't know. But based on what we know. Tasha walked away from the group and ain't tell them shit. Tasha told them I'm taking a break so I can pursue. Tasha changed her phone number. Tasha ain't talking to none of them, including her own damn sister. So I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't agree with that because I feel like number one, see, you. this is how I feel about it. You only care 
because of the, the magnitude of this tour. You didn't give a damn when they were doing shows on the weekend and flying to D.C. and flying to L.A. and flying here and flying there and doing them little one-off shows where they was probably making, you know, they was making some good change, I'm sure, because Candy would do it if she wasn't making no good change. But, okay, but you didn't care about none of them shows. You wasn't tripping over that. But now all of a sudden it's SWV and Escape and you know the magnitude of this tour and you know the amount of money that this tour about to generate. Now, all of a sudden, y'all ain't called me. Nobody told me what was happening. Girl, they don't have to tell you shit. You set them rules. They didn't. See, and again, this is based on what we know. But based on what we know, you, you set those rules. You walked away. You didn't tell them shit. They found out on a day going after they started filming the show that you had a whole solo deal. They didn't know you was flying down to Nashville signing contracts with Motown and shit. They didn't know you was recording this solo album that was ready to drop as soon as the show dropped. They didn't know none of that. So now all of a sudden, the group is supposed to extend the courtesy to her that they didn't extend that she didn't extend to them. No, you set them rules. You set the rules of engagement. And then as far as we know, again, we only know what we know. But as far as we know, you changed your phone number. You refused to talk to anybody in the group except for Tiny, including your own damn sister. You don't even talk to your sister. How they supposed to call you, girl? How are they supposed to call you? Escape needs Tasha for the show. Other than that, there will be a snooze fest. Just leave it as an SM. But it's not a show. They're doing a tour. They didn't say nothing about no show. They're doing a tour. And to be fair, Tasha is real quick to tell somebody what she did not know. And then they come back later and prove that she did know. The information may not have gotten to her, but it went to her management, a.k.a. her husband. So Tasha saying she didn't know about this tour don't mean she didn't know about this tour. Tasha saying nobody called me don't mean nobody called her. Because remember, there were times when Tasha claimed she didn't know shit and they came back later and proved that they told her, but they told her management, a.k.a. Rocky dumbass. I'm talking about the show. They don't need to call, just pull up. Now, to be fair... Will the show be as dynamic without the drama? No, it wouldn't. Let's be clear. No, it wouldn't. I ain't I ain't about to lie about that. It wouldn't. But that's why I said the other day, I'm not really interested. I don't know if I'm interested in a like eight-part series as much as maybe a three-part behind the scenes of the tour. You know what I mean? I wouldn't mind. And a little bit of drama, you know. We always got to sprinkle. Sprinkle, sprinkle, a little bit of drama. A little sprinkle, sprinkle of it. I'm, I'm here for a little bit of drama. But the monumental drama that we got from last season, yeah, nah, we not. We, I, I, uh, we ain't getting that. The show hasn't gotten a second show. They are co-headlining a tour. Right, that's what I'm saying. They're not doing the show. They're doing a tour. Hey, busy. Hey, boo. So I should be acting like she doesn't know anything, but she only acting right. Her acting better than her her solo album. Because she sure be sitting there like, wow, okay. Because did y'all see her act? Like, I still, I wish I had that clip. I need to find that clip. I need to get somebody to clip it for me, and I'm going to make it into a gift. When they handed her them damn text messages proving that her husband was taking them kickbacks. And she act like she didn't know what the hell they was talking about. Bitch, you knew. You knew. You knew what they was talking about. Stop playing with me.
All right, you guys, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Um, going out to dinner. I probably won't come back live tonight. If I get home early enough and I got the energy, I may do my um, Chase and Dallas review. I believe tomorrow afternoon, Abby and I are going to do our Chase and Dallas, our live Chase and Dallas review. You know, El Teddy is on vacation this weekend, so he won't be joining us. And then, of course, we have our RuPaul review tomorrow evening. On Saturday morning, I mean, Sunday morning, I will be doing my Love and Marriage DC review. Um, from my understanding, this episode is when um, is when we see Carmen um, come into play with the whole dynamic of the petties and Carmen. She will be going live with Carlos after the episode. So I want to wait until she does her live so that I'll do my live on Sunday morning. And then um, Sunday evening, you know, we got the Real Housewives of Potomac live review. And then on Monday afternoon, I will be doing my Martha's Vineyard live review and the Whether You Like It or Not panel. So y'all know we are booked and busy for the next couple of days. We are booked and busy uh, for the next couple of days, okay? With that being said, you guys have a great evening or a great weekend. If you got some plans, be safe, be good, be warm, be be dry. I don't know. It's supposed to be raining here and there. Um, Jonathan, Jonathan, do you be listening to me? See, this is why I got to get out of here. Jonathan, brother, you said we need a live discussion on the Real Housewives of Potomac. I'm giving you my teacher stare. That's how I look at my students when they say something that I just said. That's the look I give them. Did I that we're going to do our live review of the Real Housewives of Potomac on Sunday night? Didn't I say that? Didn't I say I said, I know that's what I said. Haven't I been doing my live review all season, Jonathan? Even when the episode, they give me nothing. Did I not? Come down here every, almost every Sunday and give it to y'all. And if you don't catch my live review on Sunday, you know where else you can catch me, Jonathan. Jonathan, you know you can catch me down to the Whether You Like It or Not panel on Monday night. Oh, I love you, Jonathan. What's going on, boo? You do it when Martha's Vineyard is on. I'm going to dinner. I can't. Let me get my lip gloss. Let me make sure I got my wallet. I ain't doing this with you, Jonathan. I'm not doing this with you. What up, princess? Hey, boo. What's going on? I'm not doing this with you, Jonathan. Listen, it's 250 of y'all in the room. I hope I got at least 200 likes. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button, okay? I love you all. I'm going to head on out. And, and listen, Make sure you are subscribed, even if you subscribed before, because, baby, YouTube unsubscribed Tracy from my damn um, channel, and she a damn mod. Shoot. With that being said, y'all, I'm out. Oh, baby, I'm recording the game. <laughs> All right, y'all, I'm out. Peace.